in it. This, I will go into um, uh, sort of how you go about productizing services later. About to go on the first date with somebody, and they turn up in that to pick you up. <laughs> They're wearing one of those. Now, I've got nothing against Casio, but you'll see where I go here. It's just worthwhile seeing, seeing uh, one end of the market compared to another. They're wearing a Casio watch, and then they pull up outside Nando's, and that's where you're going to be having your meal. Okay. <laughs> so I think if you're a, if you're a teenager, like, well, or Rachel, this is awesome. <laughs> this is a really great experience. Yeah, I love going to Nando's and he's got his own car. This is great. But I think as we kind of get a bit older and a bit more discerning, um, and that's nothing taken away from these brands. They have their place in the marketplace. But imagine if they turn up in that and then they're wearing one of those. And then they pull up outside the Dorchester in London. It's a completely different experience and we all have our own perceptions about the difference between what that is and what that is. And actually, what, um, when Adam was talking about kind of um, uh, the emotional side of buying, um, uh, uh, conceptions or misconceptions about branding is that it's just a logo. Um, actually, it runs much deeper than that, that actually, um, Branding is all about all of the little um, uh, tools which you have within your kind of um, uh, armory that you're going to, um, little, we call them touch points, little things that you're going to put in front of people. And it can be um, a number of different things, uh, from brochures to roll up banners to business cards to printed t shirts. It can be any number of different things. So I'm talking about physical printed products. That's kind of what branding is, basically. So, brand is about the feeling, like when you see, when you when you think of a brand, how do you feel about it? Branding is actually the, the physical kind of um, tools which we use to put in front of our clients. So I'm going to go back a step, actually. That um, all of, I hope all of you know, that to be able to get your message out there. Um, and I think to be able to say succinctly what it is that you do is really, really important. And actually, it should be. It sits at the centre of this, and it should be the one thing that we really get right. Things that then people start to forget about branding is that outside that you then have the layer of packaging. So I don't know if the, um, uh, you know, in the Omega watches you get in a nice oak case, for example. So just in very simple practical terms, that's what the packaging is. So could you tell me when you, um, when you're stood in front of a client, what's the packaging which kind of sits around your, your business? And it could be as simple as a brochure, uh, making sure that your logo really stands out. Um, it, like I said, it could be the, the roll-up banners which you've got, which advertise your business. And if you, if you don't have any of those, you've got no packaging. So it's really important that you've got all of these different touch points working within your business. And then the final part, which is where we start to go from services and, and start to think about how we can turn a service into a product, is where we get the value proposition which kind of sits on the outer layer. So you've got to understand what your, what your USPs are that sit within your business. Um, and I'm going to ask a question a little bit later on, but if you could get to a point, actually, where I'm trying to get to is a point whereby um, every time you deliver your product or service to a client, that the experience for you and for your customers is the same. So that you know that you're always going to um, deliver remarkable value and an outstanding product or service to your clients each and every time. That's kind of where we want to get to. And kind of the easiest way to, to do that is actually just to kind of start to think about systemizing the process. So for example, with the branding workshops, now br branding kind of sits within the graphic design space and it was quite frustrating for me that actually, um, like traditional graphic design, you get a, um, a request for a quote, you send the quote back, they quibble the price and ask for discounts, uh, you, you, eventually you get the, the proposal signed off, then you send them three concepts, they come back and say they like the colors from that one, the fonts from that one, uh, it, and then this ping pong match starts and it can last several weeks. And I was like, I just found that whole process so frustrating. Um, and so what I wanted to do, I was like, what if I could package this up into a day-long workshop and get the people who, um, you know, give people ownership back of their branding um, because it make them part of that creative process. So I created a one-day workshop. Well, I was like, when, I, when we first delivered the one day workshop, we kind of had the seven steps in place, um, but we winged it. And so we would kind of get, they used to start at nine o'clock and end at five, and sometimes we'd overrun, and it was quite hard work for the clients. So I was like, right, let's just keep on honing this process. Let's 
drilled those seven steps down into a workbook. And so when we first started doing our um, branding workshops, we didn't have any kind of a workbook. We just worked from up here, used to take from nine to five. We've had clients who come in now, uh, one chap turned up late. So basically we, we took our seven steps and wrote them in a book. It's as simple as that and it looks nice. And also the client gets to take it away at the end of the day. Um, but now our process, we had a client turn up late at 10 o'clock and they were out of our office by three with a new brand identity, with all the deliverables we promised with them, with a massive smile on the face telling us how much they enjoyed the process. So I've got this really complicated process from eight weeks now down to four or five hours. Um, also within that work, that seven step process, it's an opportunity to add in extra steps because now we've honed it and made it simple. What else could we actually do? What other steps could we do that are gonna um, add exceptional value to our clients? So we do something, for example, called doing the legal check. So when we create brand identity for a client, um, we check on um, company's house, we check the domains, we do all of the trademark checks to make sure that whatever brand identity we create, <coughs> they can legally use and they're not gonna get challenged on it. Because a lot of graphic design agencies will just draw your logo, and there you go. They don't go to the extent of checking whether that's a registered design or checking whether it's a registered trademark or anything like that. So we, this is like our insurance policy, basically. This is why I know that I can offer 100% money back guarantee because I've covered all of the bases. Um, again, is that something, are there any extra things that you could be doing um, to add more significant value to your clients? Um, we have very clearly defined outcomes. So we know that at the end of the day, you're gonna have a new logo, uh, a clear brand identity. So we're gonna work on colors, we're gonna work on fonts. And we leave the client with this branding proposal at the end of the day. Um, a lot of graphic design agencies just won't even go this far. They'll just produce a logo for you and kind of that's it. And you kind of left there going, well, where do I get it printed? Like, what do I do with this thing? Like, how do I get it onto my website? And oh, now I've got it printed on the brochure and it looks a different color to the one on the website. It's, so we do this. And so the client has total clarity on what their brand identity is. What, what, um, what clearly different outcomes could you deliver in your products or services? And this is quite, um, again, a powerful thing. It's, um, getting people to commit sometimes is really bloody difficult. They know that they want it, and they've come to that meeting because they have a need for it. And actually getting them over the line, oh, the amount of times, I had a guy last week, I've got to go and think about this for the weekend, I've got to talk, talk it through with his wife. It's like, your wife knows you're fucking here. <laughs> I'm sorry, but if you can't, like, she's not gonna, she knows how much our stuff costs. If he couldn't make the decision then, he's not gonna buy. Mm -hmm. And so having, having this form here, and I, well, I don't high pressure, I kind of put it in front of people and they can take it or leave it because I believe in my product. But it's such an amazing feeling when somebody signs there, puts a tick in the box, Right, let's go and have a, a nice glass of wine in Stone House Court Hotel's garden and enjoy the rest of the day. Um, and then look forward to serving our, our workshops to that client the following week. Um, one thing that's really helped us is like graphic design is all hourly rate mostly. Um, and through doing the one day workshops, we can, you, you can kind of start to, when you package stuff up, you can start to charge prices based on the value you're delivering to the client. So we were charging £60 an hour two years ago. Um, and we had this eight week process really complex. Um, and then now, yes, you can see how much we charge, I'm transparent about that. You can work out what the hourly rate is and what difference that makes. And there's no resistance to that. That's not me, that's not me bragging, don't, I don't want you to misread the message that I'm telling you here. But I feel that a lot of business owners aren't brave enough to put themselves out there, create a product and charge more for it and ask more for it. That's, this is, um, this, this actually isn't a client, they didn't pay me for this advice, but it was just something which I chucked out on Facebook and she implemented. This lady, is a, um, she dresses windows for a living, and she was charging £30 per hour, and a typical window would take three hours to dress. So 90 quid project. So it didn't take into account the time to drive there, the preparation, the proposal and everything else. And by the time you mapped out her hourly rate, um, not to mention the other problems, that this is very seasonal. Um, she struggled with repeat business because she'd get a booking to do one and then because several months would pass, that company would then forget about her. There's a part of the sales funnel in the, the database that she wasn't quite, you know, getting. So, and also because of the seasonality of it, like, she would have really busy periods and then no money. Busy, no money, busy, no money. So I was like, well, what if you had a product that you could 
basically put somebody on a retainer, £50 a month, say, you would offer them four window dressings per year, based on what she did. Um, so essentially what she had ended up, up with is rather than £90 per window dressing, she'd end up with £150 per window dressing, on average. Um, plus, these barren spells of up, down, up, down stopped because she was just taking money on a retainer. She had repeat business. So you can see that when you start to kind of break down the product and look at it in a... I, I'm a my background is systems analysis, I'm very mathematical about the world. <coughs> um, and so if you break down a business and just look at the maths behind it and the structure, and start to build this in, and you start to see how much value you can start to build in. Um, I had a little Brucey bonus. This is, this is I, just, I hope you don't mind, I'm just going to chuck this out there. This is a concept which I've um, kind of been developing. It's, um, Essentially something called the tipping point. So this is once you've got all of your um, your collateral and your packaging in place and you're having those sorts of sales conversations. We have, and this is what I was going back to right at the start about um, creating some shortcuts. Ultimately what we want to do is sell more of what we do. We want more customers, we want to create abundance, we want to create, um, uh, um, uh, we want to get more money, you know, and we want to buy the Aston Martin and the Guillaume because some people are happy buying the Vauxhall Nova, that's fine. Um, but essentially, I wanted to try and work out what's the difference between once I've created all of this stuff and I've given everybody the tools, how do you then attract more kind of clients? I mean, this notion of the tipping point kind of um, resonated with me. It's actually based on an example by Malcolm Gladwell. I don't know if any of you know him. He's a great, great thought leader. He's got some fantastic ideas. Um, but I wanted to understand how you could get a cheap word of mouth, basically, about your products and what, what is the tipping point behind it. Um, when, when I was talking about products, packaging, and value proposition, like um, you are all market experts, you understand your product, and you have all of the information and the IP around your product, so you own that space, you've got that. There are um, people who are, actually we were talking about this on our table earlier on, about um, people who are much more socially engaging, we call them social connectors, so they can get out there with their knowledge and then talk to people as well, and actually it's a really unique skill and the energy in the room earlier on, I know that you're all experts with your products, and you're clearly all very, very um, social connectors. Um, but I think there is an element to what's, uh, the thing which is sometimes missing is that, especially if you're a small business owner, maybe, maybe it's just yourself, maybe you're like one to five, um, most of us don't have a sales team, we're also the sales people, and actually for, for a long, I, it pushes me outside my comfort zone. Somebody challenge Thank you very much. Well, we've got the room basically for as long as we need it. So if you want to have conversations with people, carry on networking, like do use the room, go and have a look around the hotel, like there's chairs and things out there, so just make yourself a couple of